we're here in Adelaide. It's a beautiful spring day and we're going to be filming a 6.6 .6 kilowatt grid connect solar system install on a two-story townhouse. And because we're in SA and in late September 2020, SA mandated that all solar systems need remote switch off, we're going to have to make sure we install that capability to keep the government happy. So let's see how it's done. So we're putting on a 6.6 .6 kilowatt system made up of 20 330 watt seraphim blade half cut solar panels and doing the power conversion is a solar edge inverter. Now what's special about solar edge inverters is they use power optimizers, one for each panel, so 20 of these. These get bolted onto the rail first and then you bolt the panel on top of that. As the name suggests, they optimize each panel individually instead of on a conventional system where all the panels are optimized together. So this is good because we've got quite a few shade objects on the roof there. We've got aerials, we've got um, satellite dishes and we've got the other house. So this will make sure that none of that shade adversely affects the whole performance of the system. So you pay a bit more for the power optimizers, but if you've got shade it's worth it. So we've got a tin roof today. So now what we're going to walk through is how the panels are actually attached to a tin roof. And I've got Matty here. It's going to talk us through the racking system. This is a Klenergy racking system. So, Matty, take us through all the bits and how this attaches panels to the roof. No worries. So, firstly, we have a, an L foot or a tin foot, we call them. Basically, use this tech screw to fix this to the, the rafters on the roof. And our rail then mounts to that. Um, you can adjust the height to suit to make sure everything's straight and level. Once we've got our rail on there, if we need to join other rail to it, we have these splice plates. Um, they run in the back of the rail here, nice and strong, keeps everything stiff and rigid. Um, when we come to laying panels, we have end clamps here which go on the edge of the panels. And these are what we call mid clamps which go between the two panels. Um, and these hold all the panels to the rail. And this is Klenergy racking. What do you like about Klenergy racking? Klenergy racking is good. Um, I like it because it's quite stiff and rigid. It's easy to keep the rail straight. Um, you can see there's quite a lot of ridges and channels through here which keeps everything straight and strong. Um, some others flex a lot more. Uh, the other thing is the nuts, you can see uh, offset, uh, you know which way they go in. They're actually easier to feed in and out than some other types. It also comes in black which also looks really nice. Okay, now this job's using Klenergy racking. People often ask, does it matter which brand of racking I use? So. Just to show you the difference between a cheaper brand, this is Grace or Grassol, this is Klenergy. Why do you prefer the Klenergy map? Uh, I find the Klenergy is uh, a lot stronger. Um, you can see the difference between the two cross sections, a lot more metal in the rail. It gives a lot more stiffness and it's a lot easier to get your rail straight um, and overall finish of the job is a lot neater. Um, it's actually also easier to install and there's a few things like the joiners, you can see here, um, it's got quite substantial, whereas the Grace O1 uh, is a lot smaller, and it also uses the same channel that you also fix everything else to, so it can get in the way. Um, other than that, it's just about quality, it just feels a lot sturdier and is a lot uh, better finish, easy to get your rail straight, and it just feels a lot stronger and sturdier when it's mounted on the roof. Now if you're buying, say, a 6.6 .6 kilowatt solar system, and you want the more expensive Klenergy over the cheaper brands, you're looking at adding a, at least 300 bucks to the cost of the system. Okay, so we're here in the house, and because this is a townhouse, we've got the main switchboard with the meter in outside, and we've got a subboard inside. Correct. So on a job like this where you can't run the cables back to the main switchboard, um, for metering purposes, we run them to the nearest subboard, and inside that subboard is where we do all our terminations for our inverter and our consumption meter. Now, this is a tiny, this is one of the smallest subboards I've ever seen. Yes, it and is very tiny. Absolutely chock a block. So, what, what, what's the solution to that? So, today we're going to upgrade it to a larger switchboard so that we've then got room to house our consumption meter and our new CTs. Now, can you tell us what both of these things do? Because I know that this consumption meter, many installers, even solar edge installers, don't have to put this in the install, do they? No. They work without it. You don't have to have the consumption meter, but without a consumption meter, you're flying blind. You don't really know 
how much power you're using or when you're using it. With the consumption meter, it gives you a full overview of how much power you're using and when you're using it so that you can then time your appliances to make the maximum of your excess solar production instead of sending it to the grid. But to make that work, we then need a, a CT coil which goes around the cable and then that measures the amount of power flowing through and the direction and that will then give us whether we're importing or exporting power and how much plugged into this then goes to the portal so we can then view which way the power is going and when to turn on and off appliances. Now the other thing is we're in South Australia and as of well, about six weeks ago there was a mandate that you have to be able to remotely switch off the solar system. Correct. And so how does that play a part? In so to switch off the solar system in South Australia now you can either go to the meter where they to totally turn your solar inverter off or we can install a consumption meter and through the API and the internet Sappen can then export limit your inverter so you can still make maximum use of your solar but only inside your house and you don't get production uh, you don't get export yeah so in South Australia you've got two options now for remotely switching off your solar you can have as Ben said you can switch it off at the meter which means you kill everything solar wise so if you do that you're going to suddenly be importing electricity from the grid paying the full rate or you can be clever about it and you can just shut off the exports to the grid but keep the rest of the solar working so your house is still self-consuming solar and you're still saving most of the money when that switch off happens. Correct. So let's get this installed and fire it up. All right, so here we've got a Solar Edge HD Wave 5 kilowatt yep. one phase inverter, and you've mounted it on the wall there. Why did you choose that location? It's a southwest external wall. We want to keep it off the north face where it's going to get the most sun. It'll be nice and shady here. They are designed to be outside, but it's better to keep it out of direct sunlight if possible, just for efficiency of production and sort of longevity of the inverter. The inverter, you need two lots of cables, you need AC power. Yep. Um, and that's to provide the power to the inverter so it can operate. And then obviously you need to run DC cables from the panels on the roof down to the inverter and that's how it gets its solar power. This is a bit of a tricky one being a townhouse with an interior internal switchboard. Yep. Um, we're lucky that there's a bit of a roof space between the two floors that we can get into and we can run cable through to this external wall. Down again inside the wall so it's nice and neat. Come through to our AC isolator on the wall here and then from there back into the wall and up into the inverter. So you're going to mount what's called an AC isolator here, that's a big switch? Yep, it's basically a big switch, just turns it off and on for anyone rather than having to gain access to the house. If there's any issue they can come out here and it's right there. Yep, and then you also need uh, what's called a DC isolator yep. and that's to isolate the solar panels. Correct, and with the solar edge inverters that's actually fitted right on the front here. So we mount the inverter, bring our DC cables in and connect it straight into the terminals for this isolator inside. And in terms of routing the DC cables from the roof to the inverter, how, how are you going to do that on this job? Um, so all of our DC cables have to be installed in heavy duty conduit and what we'll do is very shortly put some holes into the wall here and snake up through the wall cavity to the roof space. Yep. Once we've got that through there we'll use it to push through some heavy duty conduit. Um, run our conduit run through the roof out to where we need it to penetrate onto the rooftop to connect into the solar panels. Yep. And then once we've done that, we'll run a snake through the conduit, pull the wires back down and keep it all nice and tidy. So the final bit of connectivity, if you like, for the inverter is the comms, the communications. Yep. How does uh, this inverter communicate with the internet? So all the solar edge inverters have a little Wi-Fi antenna, uh, which will connect to the customer's home Wi-Fi. You can also hardwire them if anyone prefers. So what will happen with these, we'll also install an energy meter which is connected to the inverter, measures power coming and going from the property, combined with what the inverter is doing, gives you a lot of information about power you're using, where it's going, whether you're exporting it or importing it. And another functionality of that is with the new SAPN rules, they can essentially tell it not to export excess power when they need to protect the grid on those sunny days. Cool. And in your opinion, what makes a good inverter installation compared to a crappy one? Um, presentation is the big one. So even, even a non-technical person can look at an inverter installation and go, that looks crap or that looks neat. 
and that, that tells you a lot about the, uh, the attitude of the installer, would that be fair? Absolutely, and I think it's important for the customer too. It's going on their house, it's gonna be there for a long time, so we wanna do a good job for them and not have an eyesore on the side of the building. So Ben's installed the shiny new switchboard. Ben, can you talk us through what you've added? Right, yeah, we've added some new safety switches. We've done away with one safety switch and we've gone multiple safety switches. So that way we've given added protection um, in the case of any nuisance tripping or anything like that. Also, adding a new switchboard has allowed us room to add our 250 amp CT for our new solar edge power meter. As you can see here, the operation lights on and the network, sorry, kilowatt hour pulse lights on. Now we'll go and commission the inverter and watch it work. So now the inverter's on the wall, it's powered up, and Ben's gonna talk us through programming the inverter. All right, so now that we've got the power switched on and we've done all our AC testing, we need to connect our phone to the app. So we download the app. It asks us to scan the barcode on the side. So we scan the QR code. Then we pull the red switch over here for less than two seconds. And now it will connect with the phone. So then we set our meter ID so it knows what address to look for the meter. Now we tell it what size CT ratings we put in there. 250. So we put 250 amp CTs in there. Now we go back to status and see that we're connected with our meter. So when we scroll down through our screen, we've now got an import meter where we can see we're drawing 525 watts and we've got an export meter where we're exporting nothing. As soon as we connect those panels up, away we go on the export. Mate, your job's easy, you just push buttons on a phone. Indeed. Next thing we do now is connect the Wi-Fi. All right, so now we're connected to the customer's Wi-Fi. Now we're just gonna jump back on the roof and finish off our DC and we'll be good to go. So what makes this installation a quality installation compared to one that was a little bit cheaper? Well, let's start at the new switchboard. Because the owner paid a little bit more for consumption monitoring, which I highly recommend, they had to put in a whole new subboard to fit the power meter in. Now, because these guys charged a little bit more, they had the time and the money to do a proper job. And as you can see, it's a beautiful looking switchboard. And that's important because the owner of the house is gonna be looking at this every single day. Now this switchboard is then wired into the solar inverter. So let's go and have a look at how they've installed that. So from the switchboard, the guys have installed a hidden cable that comes through to this AC isolator, beautifully mounted on the wall. Then that cable goes through, hidden in the cavity of the wall to the inverter. So you can see it's a beautiful install, really, really neat. There's almost no opportunity for water to get into any of the system. And that's especially important on the DC side because if water gets into high voltage DC, it gets really nasty really quickly. That's how you get fires. So trust me, not all inverter installs look this good. Here are some examples we've had sent into Solar Quotes and you can just see the difference. So from the inverter, we've got DC cable that goes up to the solar panels on the roof. Now the guys here, again, because they've taken their time, they've taken the hard option and they've gone up the wall cavity. Now you can't always go up the wall cavity. Sometimes you have to go up on the outside, but as you can imagine, because they've gone on the inside of the wall, it looks a lot, lot neater than some conduit going up the outside. So it's the end of a long day, but finally we've got the 6.6 .6 kilowatts installed and it's all working beautifully. And the owner of the house, Jono, can look forward to decades of low bills. The reason this was quite an involved install, well, there's a few reasons. One, it's a townhouse, so there's access issues, narrow lanes, stuff like that. Second, it's two storey, so that means there's more involved, especially if you're gonna do it safely. Uh, thirdly, the guys put an enormous effort into concealing the cables in the cavities instead of ugly cable runs on the outside of the brick. And fourth, uh, because of some of the obstructions on the roof, the guys decided that the best way to lay out the panels are on half the roof to put them landscape, on the other half to put them portrait, and that adds quite a lot of work. But the guys are um, very efficient, know what they're doing, and they really wanted to do the best install possible, so I've done a great job. Mm -hmm.